Hello, this video is going to be part two of my Green Lantern visual effects tutorials. The last one was the 3D side of it, which was done in Blender. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the compositing, which was all done in Nuke. Okay, so this is the main shot that has most of the compositing work. As you can see, it's a fairly big new script, not too crazy, but quite a lot going on. And I'll also cover the compositing in the lamp shot and the CG street stuff that was shown in the last video. This actually took quite a bit of planning. There's a few moving parts in this that I shot practically that made it a lot more convincing than trying to do the whole thing in CG. And namely, that is the lighting and the interaction with all of the green light on the walls and also the envelope that flies up at the end. So as the suit transform happens, this envelope flies off the sofa and kind of drifts in front of the frame. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. This is the comp, obviously, at the end. The footage itself looks like this. You can see there's quite a big difference there. I set up two practical lights in this shot, as you can see. One is here, which is where the lamp is. I put a green gel over this so that it would cast some green light on me. You can't really see it. It's quite subtle. It's more noticeable when I'm over here, I think. You can see it's just interacting with my hand a bit there. And then the second light is just here to add this edge light on me. I always think that if you have a really strong directional source of light when you're trying to combine live action and CG, then it always looks a bit more convincing. So I put it here and then painted it out so you can see it on the sofa. And then when it transitions to the CG suit, the CG suit also has this edge light, which kind of helps to marry the two together. So that's the main piece of footage. And then after that, I shot a separate plate, which is this. And for this, I filmed a clean plate without the two lights. So I just moved them and turned them off. So we've got uh, without the light on the sofa and without the light over here. And then I just used a couple of masks here and here just to key mix one frame of those two held over the top. So it looks like this. So you can see that we're removing the lights. Then what I also did, as you might've seen when I showed this a second ago, is I took the light that has the green gel and I just slowly moved it around the entire room. So I was lighting up all the walls, the ceiling, getting some nice reflections and casting some shadows from the light source. And then once I did that, I put frame holds on all of the frames where there were significant changes in the lighting. So as you can see, we've got all of these and then just slowly combined them all. So as you can see, the more and more that these merges that happen, the more we start to get a nice lit up plate. So if you imagine I'm standing here and the suit is glowing, this now feels like it's casting green light on the whole shot. So then I take this and I screen it on top of the actual footage. I also built an entirely clean plate for the background so that I could remove my body because obviously at some point I want the CG suit to be here so I don't want to be able to see my arms and legs and stuff. So again, that was just frame holding a couple of bits of the shot and then combining the two together. And then when the animation of the suit starts happening and the room lights up, I've done some animation in the mix of this merge node to get brighter. So that looks something like this. So then this gets merged on top of the footage and because it's screened on top, you get some weird transparency stuff happening. So I had to do a bit of roto to bring myself back. So you can see my legs and stuff are no longer going see-through. Then after that, I start to remove my body in the areas where the suit starts to take over. So this is what that transition looks like. And then obviously after that, the next thing that has to go on top is the suit itself. I pushed the look of the suit quite far in compositing. As you can see, uh, if I turn all of this stuff off, this is what it looked like just straight out of Blender. It's looking pretty good, but it needs a lot of work to bed it into the shot. So I did quite a lot of changing the black points and stuff to make it match. Uh, a little bit of tweaking of the colors. And I also separated out the glossy pass and just did a bit of grading to it just to make it match a bit better. Then there's some softening and some defocusing just to make the sharpness of the suit match the sharpness of my face in the background. As you can see, the blender render is absolutely razor sharp and everything else is a bit soft because it's quite grainy. So I'm just trying to match that a bit better. Bit of a cool tip to make adding grain to stuff look a bit better. When grain occurs on footage, it doesn't just go across the whole thing uniformly. You get more grain in the dark areas and less in the light areas. So what I do whenever I put grain on stuff is I do another luminance key and I invert it, which you can do by pressing this button up here. So now the areas of the frame that are really bright are these black bits and everything else that's a bit darker now becomes these light colors. And then I use a key mix to merge the grain over the top of the CG. And I use this luminance key as a mask, which means that more grain will be added into the darker areas. So that just helps to make the grain interaction on the CG a little bit more realistic. So this is the base render of the suit added over the top with no extra comp work. The next thing that goes on is all the glows and everything. This is made by shuffling out the emission pass. The emission pass from Blender is this custom painted texture that I made that has all of the individual lines of the muscle fibers on the suit. And then I just added a couple of extra bits to enhance some of the areas of the suit. So for example, I masked off the center section of the suit where the chest is and added its own glow to it to make that a bit stronger, which looks like this. And then I also created some separate masks that did this kind of pulsing thing, which goes through the suit as well. This is all done in 2D and I'm just revealing and taking away sections of the emission pass with rotor shapes. It still looks quite 3D, even though it's just being done in comp because the emission pass itself is obviously moving around on the 3D object. So I thought this looked really cool and it helped to add some dimension and really exaggerate the muscle fiber texture of the suit. 
So like I said, that's done with rotor shapes. It literally looks like this. So it's just basically growing them from the center and using them as masks to isolate certain bits of the suit. And then as you can see, I'm plugging this into the emission pass as a mask, which gives me this effect. And then I put some more glows on this. And when it's all combined together, you get this sort of effect. So then the glows go on top of the suit, on top of the render. And I think this really brings the suit to life. It makes it look a lot cooler. And then the final layer is this kind of green edge that comes out with the suit. This just follows the edges of the suit as it's being revealed. Again, this is all done completely in 2D. The way it's made is I'm taking the render of the suit and then I'm using the same rotor shape that I used to reveal it. So as you can see here, I've got this rotor shape that's expanding with the suit. And this is how it starts off on the chest and just slowly gets bigger and goes outwards. The rotor shape itself just looks like this. It's literally just got a bit of a blur on it. And then I'm using a slight fractal blur. And this is adding this interesting noise texture to the edge, which makes it look a lot more organic as the suit's moving outwards. So you get all these kind of fractally bits happening here. This fractal blur isn't something that's built into Nuke. It's just a little gizmo that someone made at work that I really liked. But it's really simple. So if you want to do the same thing, it's just taking some noise textures and using them going into an eye distort, which is distorting the footage. So if I was to replicate this sort of effect, you can add a noise texture, change the size to be something a bit more like this. Then you can add an eye distort node and plug it into the rotor shape and you just want to shuffle the noise texture into a different channel so for example i can put this into motion and then add a copy node by pressing k plug the b into the rotor shape the a into the noise and then i'm just going to turn off these two and i'm going to copy the motion channel into this stream now you can see there's extra channels here we've got rgba then we also have forward and backward so then in the eye distort node i can set uv channels to be forward which is then going to use this noise texture to distort the mask. And if I turn up the UV scale, you can see that it's now distorting the rotor shape using the noise. The fractal blur basically just does that all internally, so you don't have to set it up each time, which is quite handy. So back to what I was talking about, I use the same rotor shape that's revealing the suit to also mask off the suit here. Then I'm taking the alpha and eroding it slightly, which looks like this. And then I take this away from the original, which looks like this. And what this does is just give me the edge of the alpha. Then what I do is use this as a mask on the already masked out version of the suit. So this is it cut off using the rotor shape, just revealing the arms and legs and stuff. Then I use the eroded mask to then mask this again. And that just gives me the leading edges of the suit when it's transitioning. Then I grade it to make it green, which looks really cool, quite nice and punchy. And then add a bit of a glow as well. And then this gets screened on top of everything else. It starts off quite subtle. So on this frame, it's on zero. And then it starts to build up. So this is without, with. And then by here, it's almost entirely mixed on. And as you can see, it's obviously quite a strong edge look. I think this looks really nice. It gives a leading edge to the whole transition effect, which kind of draws your eye and makes it a bit more obvious what the suit is doing and where it's going. And then after that, it's really just lens flares and stuff. So when the flash is happening, this is all some sort of smeary stuff that's on the lens that's just creating some optical effects. I mentioned in the last video that it was quite difficult to get the head to feel like it was sticking to the CG suit. And I can demonstrate that by just plugging the suit straight on top of everything else. You'll be able to see that there's sections where my head is kind of drifting off the top of the suit. The reason for that is just that the weight painting and stuff of the suit doesn't move in exactly the same way that my real neck is moving and stretching and distorting. It's incredibly complicated and time consuming to get the CG to match exactly. So I did the best that I could in Blender just by hand animating it. And then to make the head properly stick to the suit so it doesn't feel all floaty, I did some compositing magic. And when I say compositing magic, what I actually mean is just transforming the head around a bit. So that's what these two nodes are doing here. This first one is fixing the head track. So you can see if I turn this on and off, that's exactly what it's doing. I just went through frame by frame and slowly animated the position of my head just by a few pixels, just to get it so that the neckline is always lining up with the neckline of the CG suit. It took a little bit of time, but it was really worth the effort because it makes the head feel like it's actually properly sticking now. The way this is done is a little bit cheaty. What I would have had to do if the background was lighter is roto my head off and then put it on top of the clean plate with me cleaned up so that I had a clean background. But because it's so dark and the background is basically just a flat color, I'm actually just transforming the whole background around by a few pixels, as you can see here. So when my head's moving, the, the background of my kitchen is also moving with me. It's quite cheaty, but again, because it's so dark, you really don't notice it at all. And it saved me a lot of time having to roto my head. I also did a bit of a luma key and just some masks on my face just to add a bit of green light onto here. So it felt like this chest logo thing was actually adding some light onto my face. And then finally, this is the envelope. So if I go to the input, you can see exactly how it was done. It's me flicking it up with my hand and desperately trying to get out of the way in time. I literally had to do about 20 takes of this until it landed in the correct place and didn't go over the top of my body. And then I drew a pretty rough mask around it and blurred it quite a bit. So that's what the mask looks like. And then cut it out, did a bit of grading just to match the shot. So when it gets a bit greener and brighter, I also keyframed the exposure and stuff on this version and then put that on top of everything. 
I really liked adding the envelope. It was a bit of an afterthought, but it just helps to make everything feel a bit more grounded in reality. Because now the CG is casting actual real light that I filmed with using the light over here to paint the walls. And then it's also interacting with a live action object. And then I also added a camera shake node down here just to add a little bit of a wobble. So it makes that kind of moment where the suit bursts out to feel even more powerful. And that is how I did this shot. So once again, just to recap, this is what it looks like. So that is how that shot was done. Let's go on to the lamp shot. Here we go. So this is the lamp shot. I loved the way this turned out. It was a lot better than I was expecting. And I ended up using this as the thumbnail just because like this moment here, I think looks really awesome. So again, I started off with a similar way of thinking where I wanted the lighting interaction on my hand to be done practically. So the way it was filmed, as you saw in the breakdown, was actually like this. So I have this light here with the green gel on it to get that lighting interaction with my hand. Then obviously I filmed a clean plate that didn't have the lamp in it and combined the two. Then I did quite a bit of luma keys and stuff again and masking different areas of the frame and light them up and make them green. Again, this really helps to make the CG feel like it's interacting with the environment more. When I just chucked it on top without this, you'll see what it looks like. It's like this. The green of this just didn't really feel justified, so I ended up making the whole shot a lot more green. And it almost feels like the lighting from this is casting on the background. Then obviously we have the CG lamp. Again, there's not loads of comp work going on this, so I turn all the effects and stuff off. This is what it looked like before, and this is after. I think the lighting on this came out really good. Again, I had the edge lighting just off of frame behind me here, and you can see it on my arm and stuff. And I set up a very similar lighting system in Blender and also used the HDRI from my living room. So you get this white edge lighting also occurring on the CG lamp, which helps to make it feel like my arm and the CG lamp are in the same place. Then in terms of everything else, all I really did is turn up the spec pass and stuff a bit just to make it a bit shinier. And then I brightened up the front of the lamp quite a lot where the particles were coming out just so that the brightness felt a bit more justified. So if I show you without it, this is what it looks like. And then obviously the particles and stuff go on top. So without it, it felt like these really bright objects were just kind of passing through the glass, but not really interacting with it. And it felt like this area should be a lot brighter. So I just drew a circular mask on here and then did a couple of different grade nodes just with some transforms and stuff to make the alphas a little bit different. So I used the first one that was bigger as like a secondary glow that was just quite wide and diffuse. And then the first one is much more intense in the middle. Then the particles go on top. As I showed in the last video, the render actually came out of Blender looking like this. As I said last time, I got this streaky look by turning the motion blur up really high in Blender. And then on top of that, I'm using a noise texture to distort the particles like this. The noise texture is animated, so it has an expression on it that just makes it animate as the frames change on the shot. And then this goes on top of the particles, which makes them feel much more like energy and less like these individual dots that are just very clearly a particle system. So then on top of that, it's got a bit of a glow on it, of course. And I also did a secondary glow where I just did a load of blurs that were built up and I put that on top of everything as well. So that's the particles with the glow and the distortion. And then the secondary glow, which is just like a very diffuse, bigger one here. Then there's the second particles. Again, these are the same sort of things. They're just rendered with really high motion blur. And then they're distorted like this using the same noise texture and then a glow. And then these go over the top as well. I think the two different particle systems add to nice variation. Originally, I tried to get it all in one and it wasn't really working. So I just did two completely different sims and then I just put the two renders on top. Then I just did a little bit of roto of my hand because as you can see here, some of the particles and stuff were going through the ring and onto my hand, which obviously you don't want. So I cut that out and put it back on top. Then I did a very subtle flare, which is just being done by taking this hotspot, making it green and blurring it sideways loads. I talked about this in a previous video. It's just loads of blur nodes with different values. Then you plus them all together, make it green, and it makes this kind of cool anamorphic -y flare, which is just very subtle on here, as you can see. And then finally, more lens dirt, because it always makes every shot look better. I talked about this kind of setup in previous videos as well. It's a couple of different images of lens dirt and stuff that I found online that I combined together. So that's what this looks like. And then you just blur the footage loads, do a little bit of grading just to make it a bit brighter or whatever you really want for your shot. And then you multiply these lens dirt images on top. And this does a couple of things. It makes them the color of the shot that's beneath it, but it also makes them only appear on top of light things in the shot. This works really nicely because it completely interacts with the footage. So as this particle system disappears, the lens dirt also disappears because the brightness that's driving them is vanishing. So if I go off before the shot starts, you can see here it's off. And then as the particle system starts, all these lens elements start to show on the screen. And then as it fades down, they also disappear as well. So that is how that shot was done. Pretty cool. Again, it's making good use of the practical lighting and then just a little bit of cleanup, tweaking the colors of the plate with some luminance keys, putting the CG on top, then the particle systems go on top, and then some magic -y lens dirt stuff just to make it look nice. And that is the final shot. 
when I was envisioning this, I wasn't really sure how it was going to turn out. And this shot turned out a lot better than I was expecting. Like if you pause it on a frame like this, that looks great. I was very happy if I do say so myself. So that was that one. And then finally, let's talk about the CG shots. So this is the script for the CG stuff. It's actually quite straightforward. Most of the scene was all rendered in one pass, so there wasn't a huge amount of compositing to do on it. So to refresh your memory, this is what the shot looks like. This one was my favourite of all the street shots. I think the camera angle and the way the camera animates and moves behind the car was really cool and quite dynamic. It starts off with the background, which is the sky, and this is done using a big sphere and the blender camera. So what I'm doing is taking an HDRI of a sky. I did a little bit of grading and stuff to it and warping it just to make it actually work for what I was trying to use it for. Then I'm using the camera from Blender inside of this massive sphere to basically film this from the inside. This works in essentially the same way that it works in Blender, except for I didn't want to render the sky into the Blender render because then it would have been baked in. Whereas what I really want to do is have control over the exposure and stuff of it separately in compositing and also the defocusing and stuff. Then we have the render of the street, which looks like this by default. The only thing I really did in terms of playing around with the colors is I used lots of cryptomats just to tweak things in the shot. So you can see here I'm making some of the posters on the bus a bit darker just because they were a bit eye-catching and distracting. Making some of the background buildings a bit darker. Making this back wall a bit less lit up and a bit more desaturated. Then just generally I made everything a bit more blue just to be a bit more in line with the sort of color idea that I was going for. And then finally, I lifted the black point up quite a bit. You can see the black points are really quite crushed on some of the buildings. CG tends to have black points that are quite a lot darker than live action footage. So one thing that I do on pretty much all full CG shots is just lift the black point up a little bit, which just makes it feel a little bit less contrasty. Then the cherry on top is I'm using a Z defocus that's plugged into a kernel to defocus it with an actual kind of Bokka uh, look, I guess. <laughs> I don't really know how to describe it. What it means is it's doing a 3D defocus, just like a Z defocus would do, but it's using this as the lens kernel, which means the bokeh will look like this instead of just being perfect circles like it is normally. Then also just to make this ping a bit better, I shuffle out the emission pass. This is all the emission textures of some of the LED screens in the bus stop, LED screens in the shops at the back, car lights, um, the street lights as well, as you can see here, and the street lights at the top and put an exponential glow on these to make them have some nice bloom. And then I merge that over the top. It's quite subtle, but again, just helps everything feel a bit more photorealistic. Then the CG Green Lantern goes on top. This really has very little comp work done to it. There we go, that's what that looks like. And then finally, I've got a volume pass, which I forgot to talk about in the last video. Um, this is probably something that I should have mentioned in the CG section, but I rendered a volume pass from Blender there's just a big cube that encompasses the whole street, so it's the whole shot. And it just has a principled volume shader plugged into the volume input of the material, and then some noise that's running through it as well. Then I rendered this on its own, in its own collection, with everything else set as a holdout, which means it just gives me basically the areas of the fog that are lit up by the street lights and stuff in Blender. And then you also get this really cool effect where the headlights are lighting up the fog as well. So you get this kind of dynamic light that's moving with the car. And what this helps to do is just add lots of depth into the scene. So if I put this over the top of the footage, I merged it over quite subtly, the mix value is on 0.25, but as you can see, it just helps to lift everything up and feel a bit less like it's just a perfectly clean render. So you get this kind of atmospheric interaction with the car on the front of the headlights, and then it also changes the contrast levels as it goes further back into the screen, where you get some more mist in the background. It's not something you even really notice when you're looking at the shot, but if I show obviously before and after, it is there and it's actually making quite a lot of nice difference. Then again, there's some lens dirt, this is quite subtle on this shot. I think you only see it for a few frames when headlights and stuff are flashing past the camera. There's another good frame where you can see all of the interaction from the headlights in the mist pass. Then I did a bit of a general defocus over the whole thing, again, just to make it a little bit softer. And then finally, for all of the CG shots, I had this kind of setup that was just creating some of the artifacts of filming with a real lens. So the first thing I'm doing is adding some very subtle chromatic aberration. This is done just using a chromatic aberration node. So you can see what it's doing on the street lights and stuff up here. And then I'm using a radial, which is just like a circular mask in Nuke. I've inverted it, so normally it looks like this, and I've just pressed the invert button in the node, which makes the edges white and the center black. And then I'm using this in a key mix, and I'm key mixing in the chromatic aberration using this as a mask, which means you won't see any chromatic aberration in the middle, just like a real lens, but as it gets closer to the edge, you'll start to see some of that color shifting, as you can see here. Super, super subtle, but it's all things like this that help just to make a shot, especially a full CG shot, feel a bit more photorealistic. Then I'm adding lens distortion. Again, another artifact of filming through a real lens that people often neglect on CG, but it really helps. Gets rid of all of these perfectly straight lines on the street and makes everything a bit more curved. I think this was a 35 mil lens. So it's not super distorted, but it just adds a bit of warping at the edges. And then finally, adding some grain, just like a real shot. 
Obviously because it's full CG and I'm also rendering this using optics denoising in Blender, the source renders are super super clean, there's basically no noise in them at all. So I'm doing the same trick that I showed before which is an inverted luma key which gives me all the dark areas of the frame and then I'm key mixing some grain over the top of this using that luma key as a mask. So you can see the difference here, if I just put the grain on the whole thing this is what it looks like but the bright parts in the frame shouldn't get this grainy because that's not how light works. So with the key mix you can see that the darker areas still get the grain but things that are lighter are a lot less intense. And there we go, that is how it was done. So all the CG shots were done like that, they're all pretty similar so I'm not going to talk about all of them. But yeah, I think it turned out really cool. Building the streets and everything took me about two weeks. So to do all of that work just for four shots in the video that lasted about 12 seconds was a, a bit soul destroying. But what can I say, I love doing visual effects. So there we go, that's how I did it. That is the conclusion to the two part tutorial series on how I did the effects from the Green Lantern. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. I know that nuke videos are a bit more of a niche, but I get loads of requests to do them because there's less nuke content on YouTube. As always, all of the assets from these videos are on Patreon if you're interested. I'm gonna upload one of these nuke scripts as well, probably the, uh, the one of the suit transforming. Annoyingly, I use Nuke Indie, which is paid, but obviously I want to upload the nuke script for nuke non-commercial so that everyone can use it for free. So I'm gonna have to recomposite that shot at some point, which I'll probably do in the next couple of days. So that will be on Patreon. All of the Blender files are already on there. So if you want to support what I do and you're interested in getting the project files and seeing how it's done, they're on there and you're more than welcome to. Thank you very much for watching. Consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.